Hey guys, it's Chris here, WB4ULK. Um, we've had some going back and forth the last couple of weeks about packet. Um, and uh, we've got a big exercise coming up, and so some people have been interested in it. So Barry put the radios together and uh, got them programmed up, and he's passed them out. And some people were asking some questions about TNCs. Um, I'm making this video for the guys who can't find a TNC or don't want to buy a TNC that may want to try the software side of things. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this video together uh, to show you step by step how to build a TNC packet node uh, using Raspberry Pi and a piece of software called Dire Wolf. Um, what's needed for the project is a Raspberry Pi 3 or better. Um, you need an RA35 USB interface and you will need a radio obviously and you've got to build a cable for it so the Raspberry Pi will talk through the RA35 to the radio and um, the RA35 is basically it gives you your push to talk and your audio in and out so I'm going to take you through this video of uh, putting the image on the Raspberry Pi and then building your cables and then connect the Raspberry Pi up to the RA35 and then up to the radio then getting the radio adjusted so that it'll work on the network and um, I'll have all the steps in between of what software you need to download and and how to use it so uh, hope you enjoy it and uh, if you're looking at building a uh, software based TNC um, come on follow along and uh, go ahead and get your stuff ordered oh and I would like to throw in there um, this video is going to be hosted on a web page uh, with instructions and links and things like that. So anything I reference here, uh, as far as equipment or you know ordering things or buying things or pinouts, pictures, things like that, they will all live on the website that these videos are embedded in. So if you come across this video um, just on YouTube. I'll, I'll have it in the uh, notes down below, but go to wb4ulk.com and uh, look for the packet videos. Okay, so we know what we need. We need the Raspberry Pi, we need the RA35, we need a radio. Now there's going to be some software that we need. So the first piece of software is Etcher. We've got to get a copy of Etcher. So if you do a Google for Etcher. Um, I get it from SourceForge. But anyway, we need to get Etcher. What Etcher is going to do for us is give us the ability to take that image that Steve gave us that you've downloaded and burn it to a uh, micro SD card. So once you get Etcher downloaded, you're going to launch it. And what you're going to do, I'm going to plug the card in here. So I've got the drive plugged in that I've got the source on. And yeah, I'm getting all those notifications. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is pick Flash from a file. And we're going to go down and pick that drive. And see that file right there, wb4bxo image.gz? You're going to pick that image. Then you're going to select the target. Now, I don't have a card in here right now. I've already done this. <clears throat> but you're going to select the target, and that will be your micro SD that you have plugged in. Be very careful that you choose that micro SD card. Be absolutely sure what drive that is. Once you've selected that target drive, just hit flash. That's it. That's all there is to it. And you've got your image burned onto that micro SD card and it's ready to be plugged into the Pi. And when you plug it into the Pi and turn the Pi on, it will boot up with uh, a copy of Raspbian with Dire Wolf running in the background. Okay, so we've got the, uh, we've got the image all burned in onto the card. Everything went okay. So now it's time start with the pie. Now there's the little micro SD. We're going to put it in the 
the back of the pie there. Now, what I've done is uh, I've got just a little router laying around because when this guy comes up, you don't know what IP address it's going to be. And if you don't want to hook up a keyboard and a mouse to it, you can hook it up to your network and then remote into it with your laptop. So what I've done is I've just hooked up a little router here and I've got it plugged into my laptop and uh, I've leased an IP address from it. When this guy comes online, it's set up with the network port turned on and it'll lease an IP address. So got that ready to go. So I've got the network connection plugged in. So now we're just gonna plug the power into it and start it up. After we got the image burned, you see that we, uh, we put it on the card, put it in the pie. Now we need to come back to our laptop. Another piece of software that you're going to need is WinSCP. <clears throat> what this does is this allows you to view the file structure on the Pi remotely, uh, looking at any Linux box, and uh, you need to get a copy of PuTTY. PuTTY runs inside of WinSCP. Uh, if you install WinSCP and then install PuTTY, then when you're inside of WinSCP, you can move files back and forth between your computer and the Raspberry Pi or any other Linux box. And then you can use the PuTTY shortcut to go in and go to the command prompt of the remote machine and be able to uh, do anything you want on the remote machine. So that's what we're going to do. When you plugged your Pi into the router, at least an IP address from the router and just like your laptop did, um, you'll need to log into your router and find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi so you know what it is. So once you have that IP address, you can open up WinSCP. Mine's 104. You won't have all of these saved links, so I'm just going to show you how to do it from a new site. Uh, click on new site. Type in the IP address of it, 192.168.1.104, I think it was. It's going to be port 22. Now, the username is going to be pi, and the password is going to be wb4bxo. Now, when you're at this point right here, you can hit save, and then it'll put it over here for you uh, on the side. So I'm going to log in. Now, on your screen, it's going to come up and say something about authentication for SSH. That's because that's the first time it's connected to that machine. Tell it it's okay and go ahead and move forward. So I'm going to put my password in here, which would be lowercase wb4bxo, and I'll have all that in the notes on the page too. Now, over here, you can see the file structure of the Raspberry Pi remotely. And you can see there's a folder for Direwolf and, you know, of course, all of the Raspbian files. Anyway, up here, you will see these two little terminals. This is how you open a session to the machine to uh, have a command prompt on the remote machine. Now, when you install PuTTY, you should install it to the default settings so it goes in the program C you know C drive program folder blah 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 whatever and that is where um, WinSCP looks for it so if it's not there you're gonna have to tell WinSCP where to go find it or otherwise you're gonna have to go out and make your own session so we'll click the button there so now we're looking at the prompt on the remote machine and you're already logged in as Pi so all you need is your password which is WB4BXO Now, once you're in there, I would go ahead and change the password. So we use the password command. So you put password. Of course, it's not spelled out. Excuse me. You're a user, so you need to use the sudo command, S-U-D-O. We're going to use the password command, and the user is pi. It's going to ask you for the new password. Now, I'm putting in my same old password again, so it's going to tell me that it didn't change. Well, yeah, I guess it did. 
So anyway, that's what you need to do when you log in is go ahead and change your password and get that set up. So at this point, we have the image loaded. We have the Pi up and we can see our Pi from the laptop. So now we're going to go ahead and build our cable to interface the Pi to the radio.